It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmani Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Earlier this week, negotiations to form a new government in Germany fell apart. On September 24th, Germans elected a new Bundestag, German parliament, in which the major traditional parties, the Christian Democrats and the Social Democrats, who had been governing in a so-called grand coalition, significantly lost control. Also, for the first time in Germany's post-war history, a far-right party was able to enter parliament. Chancellor Angela Merkel of Christian Democratic Party entered into a coalition talk with the neoliberal Free Democratic Party and the ecologist Green Party. However, these talks fell apart when the Free Democrats declared that their positions are too far apart from those of the Greens. Now it looks like a new election or a minority government are the main options remaining. Here's what political scientist Hendrik Hein from the University of Dusseldorf had to say. We are indeed in an exceptional situation. Such a situation has never occurred before. The German president is now required to bring order in so far as he can try to bring all parties back to the table, maybe even to explore any options for a possible forming of a government based on the results of the last election. Joining me now from Berlin, Germany, to analyze the political situation is Victor Grossman. Victor is the author of Crossing the River, a memoir of the American left, the Cold War, and life in East Germany, and writes regularly about German politics. I thank you so much for joining us, Victor. Thank you for inviting me. So, Victor, what has happened here? Why did the coalition talks fall apart? It seems there are, there are actually four parties because the Christian Democrats have a special sister only in Bavaria, and the four of them each trying to push their own position, uh, t making certain uh, compromises, but not enough in the end. It, it was dragging on and dragging on and dragging on, and it, nobody knew, will it work out or will it not work out? They say that it almost worked out at the very last minute until this one party, the Free Democrats, came and said, we're not making, we're not going with it anymore. It's, it's gone. The chances are lost. So now all the parties have been invited to speak to the president. The president in Germany is not the same as in the States. He's more a figurehead uh, uh, character, except in such situations. Now he has the job to try and patch something together. And there are three possibilities, pos uh, as, as mentioned by your, uh, as a professor. One is that well, one is that they try again, but the, uh, they don't want to try again. And especially the Free Democrats say no chance. The second possibility that they again have a grand coalition between the Social Democrats and the Christian Democrats. That's what they've had for the last four years. But that hurt the Social Democrats so much. They lost so many uh, votes in this because they were, the, they were the junior partners. They came out with only about 20% of the vote and they don't want to do it again and they saw no more. Now, there is a chance some of the people in the Social Democratic Party uh, are willing to think that over. We'll have to see tomorrow. Another possibility is to have a minority government. There's never been anything like that in Germany where the chancellor, that would probably be uh, Angela Merkel, uh, with one of the other parties would rule, but would not have a majority. That means that every time she wants to get a, a, some uh, new law in order, she has to try to win some of the other one of the, or the other of the other parties to give her a majority, which means that it's very, very shaky. And the other possibility is that they give up and have a new election only a few months. The last one, was, as you heard, was in September, a new election within a couple of months, it would have to be in about two, three months. And actually, nobody really wanted that, especially when the voters don't want to go to the polls again. And there's a chance that it won't come out any better than before. There's also another danger that this far right wing party, it's, it's, it's to the right, if you want to say, of, of, of the Trump Republicans. It's a far right party that they, that they had about almost 13 percent this last election that they might even gain by it. So that there's all kinds of pl 
pluses and minuses. Frankly, in my own opinion, none of them are any good. <laughs> These four parties, they're none of them any good, and they're none of them really promising a, a, a better, a real hope for Germany. So, Victor, in terms of trying to form a coalition, what are the issues at stake? What are they talking about? What are they deferring on in terms of issues? Uh, one big issue was the question of the immigrants or refugees, because the Greens say that refugees who coming from the Near East and from Northern Africa who have arrived in Germany should be able to bring their wives and children, in the most cases, sometimes it's their, their husbands, but usually it's their wives, their families here. The, the, Christian, uh, the Christian Democrats, or rather their sister party in Bavaria, says no, no, nobody else, nobody else. That was one big issue. Another big issue was about um, environment. The Bavarian party is against any improvement in the environment, and so are the Free Democrats. They don't want to cut down on coal, they don't want to cut down on, uh, on uh, uh, gasoline motors, and there's been a big fight on that. There are other issues too, but those are two of the uh, issues that keep on coming up uh, over and over. Victor, if you could elaborate more on the fact that the Social Democrats, who had initially said they would not enter into a new coalition with Angela Merkel's uh, CDU, but now pressures mounting on the party chairman, Martin Schulz, to renew the grand coalition. Why is the SPD so reluctant to enter into a new coalition uh, with the government? I know they had minority status in the past and not a lot of power, but why are they declining now? Well, as I, uh, as I mentioned, this, the Social Democrats were the junior partners with the Christian Democrats and, uh, and the Bavarian sister party, that means with Angela Merkel. They were in there for four years and they did nothing but lose votes. They lost and they lost. Uh, and they're afraid that if they do that again, they might disappear or they might no longer be the second major party. They are now still the second major the second party, but only 1% of the vote, whereas the Christians have uh, over 30%. It's, uh, also not so much. They've been all, both of them have taken losses to this right-wing group. But they would be so small that they're really scared. Uh, uh, and some of them are scared. Others say, we can make compromises. Uh, the interesting thing is that the Social Democrats are close to the union movement and are under pressure partly to go together with the Christian Democrats, who are not very friendly to the union movement or to the labor movement, or to stay out, and uh, they're caught really between two wings of that party. One of them, one wing would like to get in. It means nice having nice cabinet seats that are very, very comfortable chairs and pensions and all kinds of perks. The others say, no, we'll only lose out. And that's a big question at the moment, which we may see an answer to tomorrow evening. All right, now let's turn to what uh, you have mentioned uh, a few times now, the rise of the far-right party. There are some uh, that believe that if new elections are to be held, say, in April, such a vote would, vote would strengthen the far-right anti-immigrant AFD or alternative for Germany. What do you think of this? Is that true? Is the right-wing extremism still growing in Germany? If, if so, why? Yes, it's, it, the, this right-wing party is very much alive, uh, called the uh, Alternative for Germany. It got close to 13% of the vote in September. It, uh, it's now in the polls, it's about, it stayed about that level, between 11 and 14%. But the, the problem is that, the, uh, that many people in Germany are really sick of all the old parties. They don't believe any of them. They're unhappy and dissatisfied, and especially they fear, they fear for their jobs. They fear for their, they don't know what's going to come, uh, uh, come along in terms of pensions. And uh, and they many, many don't believe either of the bigger parties and say, well, let's try it with this new party. At the same time, this new party has no better program than any of the others, but it builds on racism 
and hate the immigrants. It's a little bit like the uh, building the wall to Mexico. It hate the immigrants, keep the immigrants out. It's their fault, which is of course nonsense because it's not their fault. But uh, it wants to hate Muslims, to hate anybody with a different skin color, and that's what they built on. And they're trying to get people who are unhappy and dissatisfied. They're trying to get them interested. Uh, to trying to to win them to say that's your enemy. That's the ones who are giving you trouble. Instead of looking up on top, it's the ones who are giving them trouble and are making problems. Are organizations like say Simmons, the the, the company the Big Siemens, which was just announced, is firing eight or nine thousand uh, people in Germany. And another an airline, Air Berlin, is firing people. Those are, although they're making money by the billion. They're firing people to, to find some cheaper workers someplace else. That's the people that they should be angry at. Unfortunately, a lot of people have fallen to this line. It's the foreigners who are uh, uh, at fault. And, there's fee and the other parties, at least except for the left-wing party, the other parties have sort of weakened in their opposition to this, uh, especially the Christian Democrats and especially the ones in Bavaria who are for the furthest to the right. They, they're afraid of losing votes to these right-wingers and therefore they've been burning right themselves. It's moving the whole, the whole picture in Germany towards the right and that's a dangerous situation. And uh, the left party, De Linke, uh, Victor, um, where are they at? How did they do in the election? And what is their position in all of this? The left party gets, uh, stands at about 9, perhaps 10 percent of the vote, which, isn't, which is not bad, except that it's pretty well stagnant. They haven't really improved. That's what they got in September, and the polls are showing just about the same. They are the only party which opposes all military um, um, uh, use of, of German troops abroad, whether in Afghanistan or in Africa or in other places. They say Germany should no longer, should never send troops abroad anymore. It sent enough in the past century, shouldn't. They're alone in that. They're also alone in really a real fight for people's rights, and especially people who are working people, their rights. And uh, they're against discrimination of every kind, also against foreigners. But first of all, the media never give them a fair break. And second of all, uh, there are many prejudices against them. In West Germany, they still see them sort of as a, an East German party, although that's not true anymore. Now they're in both parts, but there are many, basically, and, uh, 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 you know, afraid, fear of leftists, of leftists, or what in America is often called liberals. They're afraid of them, and this has kept them down to this 9 or 10 percent. Also, the fact that they have not yet really found a way to reach people and to prove to them they are the party who is just fighting to keep housing costs, uh, rents down so they're not so expensive, to keep pensions, to get pensions up so that people who are no longer working at least can get along or not in poverty, uh, and to use the money instead of sending soldiers abroad and building more and more and more armaments, which is what they're doing, to turn that money for, for uh, kindergartens, for the old people, for schools, for the schools are in a mess. That's their position, but they have not really been able to get beyond that about 9, 10 percent of the people with that message. Victor, earlier you mentioned that one remaining possibility for Angela Merkel is to head a government, which is a minority government, because she does have the largest uh, party in parliament thus far. But a minority government would be unprecedented in post-war uh, Germany. Um, what do you think the chances are of this happening? And what would this mean in terms of German politics and governing with minority status? Well, uh, Angela Merkel is, although she's she's uh, not a very loud speaker. She's not a she doesn't do a lot. She's uh, a lot of ranting. She's a quiet speaker. She gets along. She has a, a pleasant way of talking to people. But her policies are not so good for people. However, she's made herself so popular that she does have the best chance of holding out through this whole crisis and, and winning out again for another four years. But they're not quite so positive 
it's, the chances are not quite so positive as they were, say, a year or two, a few years ago. There are people who'd love to get that job instead of her. And so uh, she said that she would prefer to have new elections rather than to have a minority government where it's always balancing and dependent on the approval or disapproval of the other party. She'd rather have a regular election. Whether that will come true or not, now the next day, perhaps days or hours, or at least weeks, should show whether Merkel still has the, the, the power to stay, stay in there and keep in there and keep in control. All right, Victor, I thank you so much for joining us today, and I appreciate your analysis, and uh, thanks for bearing with us with the technical challenges of connecting via broadband. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for hearing me, and my greetings to people there. Goodbye. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.